Here's the first wheel problem most of us have had. You want to get something delivered, but no one is available. And it's a problem that is only set to grow. Let's rewind. Back in the day, trains and trucks hauled all our goods to neighborhood stores, and that's where we bought them. And everyone buys cut flowers and bouquets the year round. In our modern world, we buy a lot of stuff online. The U.S. Commerce Department says online sales accounted for a third of growth in retail sales in 2015, and it's projected to just keep climbing. And that's what we do, right? We log into Amazon or wherever, we order all the things, and then somehow it's magically shipped to our house. The thing is, that freight is shipped worldwide, not just countrywide. And oh hey, even big rig drivers can't keep up with demand. The American Trucking Association says it need to hire 89,000 drivers each year the next 10 years just to keep up. Basically, the growing demand for delivery is not sustainable. While the Postal Service begs folks to use their boxes, companies like FedEx are beefing up on robotic-assisted sorting systems and hiring holiday workers. Normally during the year, we probably have 10,000 labels per week, maybe 20,000 labels. During peak, we're looking at 50 to 100,000 labels on average. Of course, there's a tech solution to all of this, and it's automation. Big rig drivers just watched in amazement as driverless truck company Auto made a beer run through Colorado with the driver sitting in the back. More locally, delivery people are hard to hang on to too, which is why Amazon keeps cracking away on its drone delivery service. China's largest online direct sales company already uses drones to deliver things within a 15-mile radius of one of its large warehouses. And there are even pizza drone deliveries now, like this beta test in New Zealand. It's pretty clear the delivery race is focusing on autonomous delivery, but there's one bit of turbulence here in the US that's pretty hard to get over. FAA regulations cannot keep up with all that innovation. It's such a problem that Amazon drones are being tested in the UK because it'd be too difficult to test them here. The drones must be under 55 pounds and fly within sight of the operator. They can't fly higher than 400 feet or faster than 100 miles per hour, and they must stay at least five miles away from an airport. The thing is, there's another way that doesn't require FAA regulations, just wide enough sidewalks. Starship Technologies got rolling one year ago with a testing program in a suburban neighborhood in London and just did a test delivery in a similar place in San Francisco. Certainly, robotic deliveries will be the biggest thing happening to, to e-commerce and online shopping. Right now, you know, you know, businesses are spending you know, a few dollars, up to seven dollars for, for local delivery, and uh, robots like this can do it uh, with, with lower cost with you know, just one dollar or, or in the future even just cents. We wanted to see it before it got the Hitchbot treatment. Do you remember Hitchbot? This summer I am traveling across the United States of America from Boston to San Francisco with a bucket list of places I want to visit along the way. That was the friendly Canadian robot that just wanted to travel across the U.S. and talk to people. Hitchbot hitched its last ride. On Saturday, the robot was found in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, resting in pieces. How long before this thing gets uh, stolen? So, uh, you know, it's not so easy to, to, to steal a robot like this because okay. it's actually heavy enough, you know, that uh, it's not so comfortable, you know, to lift it up and you know, run away with it. I could totally steal this. I need a partner. Right now, the delivery bot is used primarily for parcel, food, and groceries with some commercial partners in Germany, the UK, and Switzerland. The Swiss Post even lets it do prescription delivery, which you can imagine would be a boon for elderly or disabled people. Today's test is a food delivery from a local shop to a woman who just had foot surgery. Surprising even herself, she's got a fondness for the bot. Some people tend to be afraid of technology. Well, think? I'm kind of one of those people, but this isn't really scary. So, you know, I have my little cell phone. My children have shown me how to do that. I, I would be open to it. We have been driving this, these robots in 50 cities. 
the majority of people, they are just ignoring it. They just accept it as part of the normal environment on the, on the sidewalk and they do not give it even a second look. And you do not actually believe it before you see it, but it's true. Okay, I don't believe you, but okay. We took it for a spin and made some deliveries to see just how well this thing would be received by strangers. Excuse me, sir. Would you, uh, this robot would like to make a delivery to you. Would you like to receive this robot delivery? So that's the lid. Make it happen. There's something inside of it. Is there? Yeah. How do I open it? You yeah. have to open it. How do I open it? You just lift it up like Very, a like you're afraid. Wow. Do I you like, like some the flowers. Do you have somebody you can give that to? I do actually. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Can you imagine getting things delivered by a robot? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm open to whatever. Honestly, I like to have things delivered by people, but no, that's fine. Yeah, that is so, totally fine. So if yeah. we, if, so why do you like having things delivered by people? Um, I just, uh, it's a job for somebody to have and it's just good for the labor market. My money is on those little sidewalk droids gaining acceptance well before the somewhat irritating drones do. Starship will be rolling out their sidewalk bots within a few months in Washington, D.C. So we'll see how they do and if their developers can keep them safe. I'm also conflicted about bots. On the one hand, I order all my stuff right down to shampoo online because it's easy. On the other, I like to buy my gifts from local stores because my mom is a small business owner. And this is a pretty awkward line I'm walking here, but there's no way I'm alone. Who among you doesn't like the convenience of ordering on Amazon while also wanting to keep your local favorite businesses alive? Also, she has a flower store. And part of the joy of having one is actually making the delivery and seeing how happy people get when you bring them flowers. But if it really is a dollar a delivery for consumers, maybe then we'd be helping solve a problem rather than contributing to a societal decline in mom and pop stores that no one actually wants to see. Not unlike these. <laughs>